Hi, good day to all. This is Calvin here again. Welcome to this week's latest edition of our weekly technical outlook. As usual, I'll be covering the latest trend bias and key levels to watch from a multi-week uh, perspective. That means we talk about one to three weeks time horizon on the SPX 500, the NASDAQ 100, the Hong Kong 50, the Japan 225, and the German 40 indices for the week of 13th of December to 17th of December 2021. Oh my, so we have about close to three more weeks before 2021 ends. So this week is uh, kind of pretty, pretty pivotal. After last week, uh, CPI print, which is rather hot. Uh, those who actually follow me on Twitter, you can actually see my comments on its uh, short-term dynamism, dynamic at play. So before we go into the details of uh, my latest weekly outlook uh, from a technical perspective, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, so uh, before we dive into the charts, okay, let's take a look at the raw momentum analysis. That means what I did is I, uh, those who actually followed my video, this should, should be pretty much uh, common, where I actually di I dissect the weekly performance. I break it down uh, as comparison to the prior week. Then I take the prior four-week average and measure the difference, which is uh, considered as a very simple momentum analysis. So what we could see is that uh, the downside momentum has indeed reduced. Uh, as we mentioned last week earlier, where we actually advocate a potential bullish reversal on the major US stock indices, which is the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, which it came out as expected. Uh, if you could see is that last week, they show a very strong outperformance, showing performance and outperform the rest of the world. If you compare it against the China related stock indices, which is the Hang Seng Index, the Japan 225 and the German DAX, which represent Europe. So uh, the S&P is actually up 3.82%. The Nasdaq 100 is up 3.95%. And the one that is kind of, we are actually paying a close watch in this couple of weeks. Why? Is the Dow Jones Industrial, which is actually the cyclical, considered as a cyclical heavily weighted index because of the component inside, uh, which is heavily skewed towards uh, financials and a, a, a industrials. So what you could see is they actually outperformed uh, last week, slightly above the Nasdaq 100. And what's most interesting over here is that, yes, despite the strong CPI print, the S&P 500 actually closed as a fresh all-time closing high last Friday. Pretty interesting price movement. So uh, what we could see is that if I were to take the difference between last week's performance and its prior four-week average, you also start to show signs of positive uh, uh, signs of positive momentum as interpreted by the numbers over here. So uh, then stretching on to the one that is the weakest in the last couple of months will definitely be the China-related uh, stock indices where especially uh, those who are heavily concentrated on the big tech, China big tech, which is we Hansing, we have Tencent, the Hansing tech, definitely there's more, uh, uh, we call it a concentration on China big tech. So what we could see is that uh, their underperformance also starts to reduce as compared to last week. Uh, positive 0.96 uh, for the Hansing index, the Hansing tech index is at 1.85%. Uh, then uh, for the Nikkei 225 as well, uh, going into positive territory last week, 1.46% uh, versus a prior week performance on negative 2.41% and also not too bad on the uh, momentum, uh, on the difference between the last week performance and the prior four week average, which is at positive 2.81. And one also start to show stunning uh, up uh, results will be also the German DAX. Why? Because uh, we are actually watching this closely as well because the European markets are so heavily weighted towards the cyclical. Okay, why cyclical is important? Because if you look at the last three or four weeks, cyclical stocks got hit badly. Why? Uh, because one thing, we start to see uh, the start of this uh, fears of this number one, COVID-19 Delta variant that is picking up steam in Europe. Then thereafter that, we start to see the emergence of this Omicron variant okay, that's spreading to the rest of the world, where it will start to impact uh, holiday travels in the European uh, uh, continent. So that actually dragged down uh, lots of uh, European uh, industrials and, and financial uh, related stocks, especially airline stocks. But what we could see is that last week, the uh, prior few weeks of what I call a sell-off managed to get managed to get reversed by the showing of the German DAX in uh, German uh, 30 index, a uh, German 40 index, pardon me, at 2.99%. But they are still relatively slower as compared to the US index. Why? Because they have not made its a new fresh all-time high yet. Okay. 
So uh, what we could see over here is uh, 2.99% or 3% or so uh, versus the prior week of a negative 0.56%. And we have a very quite a relatively strong uh, performance in terms of the difference at 4.37%, uh, only slightly below the US uh, stock indices. All right. So now then the other chart I flash is that uh, why last week we are kind of advocate this uh, potential bullish reversal because we think that there's a kind of uh, over fear in the market in the last couple of weeks because of potential fear capitulation as depicted by the VIX index. So I could see this VIX index is a contrarian opinion indicator very quickly. High levels in VIX represent fearfulness in the market. Once people are fearfulness, there's a possibility that we will start to see a bullish reversal in stock prices. Why? Because if the fear gets too extreme, that means when everybody is selling, Who's left to sell? Okay, this is the, the, the kind of analogy. When prices get, pardon me, when prices get, uh, uh, the VIX gets down, but these tend to be more sticky. Uh, they can actually prolong in a lower level for a long period of time. Uh, this is where we start to see ex a bit of a uh, uh, higher level of complacency or higher level of, uh, we call it greed, where everybody uh, do not care about risk anymore. They are totally, what I call it, in, a se in the sense of high, more optimism towards risk loving. That means they tend to actually uh, go out there and start to accumulate risk assets like stocks. Okay, but uh, on, the, on, 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 the, on, on the downside over here, what you could see is that, yes, we may start to see very low level of VIX. It doesn't mean that immediately the stock price will collapse. Uh. No, it can stay there for a period of time. But what's interesting is, if VIX starts to go up high for a certain level, it can't stay high forever, and the price of stock will reverse. That's like what we see earlier on. Why this level is important? Because it's a critical resistance, as depicted by this chart that I draw for you, linking from the highs of uh, June 2020, uh, October 2020, 30th of October 2020, uh, 29 January 2021, and most recently 3rd December 2021, at 31.9, 32 key resistance. Once you hit this key resistance in the past, this is where we start to see a reversal on the SPX or the S&P 500, okay, as highlighted over here. So this particular scenario or observation plays out again on 3rd of December, right exactly at this level, when the VIX try to push up on the key resistance but failure to have a close above it. So this is what I call potential fail capitulation, where we could see a potential bullish reversal in the SPX, which indeed happened. So where we could see right now over here is that the VIX indeed collapsed, all right, for the key resistance, and the SPX starts to much higher, and last week it closed a fresh all-time high, closing higher, even though the intraday high is uh, 4744 in November, okay, okay, all right, there's an uh, intraday, you haven't reached the go above the intraday closing high yet, but close above a fresh all-time closing high. So what we could see is that uh, the SPX is, uh, even though it still hasn't goes down to a key support level, which is at 1420, that means it hasn't reached a kind of level of extreme co complacency, even though we, we believe that the bulls may be a bit sticky around at this level. But nevertheless, what we could see is that the gap of the current VIX on last Friday, last Friday close and the level of 1420, there's still a bit more room to go. That means, i.e., what is translated to us over here is that SPX may still have legs for further potential upside. Then definitely uh, this week will be a pivotal week for the markets as well. Why? Because we have a string of uh, this uh, central bank meetings, the last central bank meetings for the year of 2021. That means uh, all happened on the same day, Singapore time. Huh? I'm talking about Singapore time. Early in the morning, 3 a.m., you have the Fed FOMC. Then you have a uh, later part of the day, you have the European uh, central banks, uh, two European key central banks, the ECB and the BOE. Okay, then of definitely if we wrap it up, uh, will be the not so uh, kind of giving us kind of any surprise will be the ever dovishness of BOJ, Bank of Japan on Friday. So what's key, definitely everybody will watching on Fed Powell. All right, so now the key thing over here is that I wrote something in my note on what's to expect on the FOMC meeting this coming uh, Thursday and why the Fed chair press conference is as important as the dot plot that's going to release on the same day itself. All right. Okay. The, later I'll share you where to see my note. It's actually, uh, I publish it every morning in my social media uh, Twitter page. Okay. CMC social media Twitter. Uh, all right. Uh, so very quickly, uh, let's dive down to the weekly performance, last week performance of the 11 S&P sectors. That means the 11 sectors that are made out of the S&P index, uh, stretching from technology all the way to cyclicals to defensive healthcare and whatsoever. So what I could see is that uh, a sign of green, 11, 11, 11 sectors all in the green, with information technology being the outperformer, 5.98%, uh, 
And also this comes in as despite that uh, even though Fed is about to tighten interest rate, information technology still actually uh, outperform the general market. Why? Because uh, a part of the information technology is consists of you know Apple companies that are have good balance sheet versus com versus growth stocks or, or technology stocks that has weaker balance sheet. This will actually be a problem going forward if the Fed start to hide. So growth stocks or technology stock or technology growth stocks, I would say that has weaker balance sheet. That means they have more debt and weaker earnings growth. For example, you can actually take a look at the Arc Innovation ETF or ARRK. They're actually underperforming the general market. Why? Because they consist of a lot of growth stocks that are has a weaker earnings growth and have weaker balance sheet. Okay, so simple as that. All right. So uh, pretty much healthy. Uh, we start to see a, a bit of a cyclical play that is actually uh, coming into the backdrop as well that is uh, up performing the market, especially the energy, which is related to oil, 3.69%. Uh, not so good on the financials. Why? Because of the you know, the, the, the US 10-year and 2-year yield curve is actually flattening. Okay. Now, uh, immediately, let's right now, immediately go down to the technicals chart of the index. That is, I believe that most of you are eagerly uh, waiting to hear. So before we jump into the S&P, right, one more uh, kind of a um, inter-market analysis that we can actually use to gauge the broader, bigger, the broader picture of the US stock will be looking at the generals of the market. So one of the generals of the market is will be the semiconductor index, the SOX or the XOOX ETF, which I tend to monitor very it very closely to, to gauge uh, whether this leader is actually showing strength or losing strength. Why? Because once a leader is leading the 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 the, the market, it means that the general mar market has the tendency to actually potentially show bullish bias. Okay, so what we could see over here is that the longer term uptrend, the major uptrend since 18th of March 2020 remains intact. Why? Very closely, uh, it still remains above the 200 day moving average. And what's important over here is that uh, this previous slide that came in line with the general market, uh, you know, during the, the, the breakout of this uh, Amicron virus, uh, 5th November to 19th November, it started to show this uh, bearish divergence. Then after that, it pulled back. So this pullback over here, right? If I were to draw the percentage of pullback, it's rather minute, uh, okay? It's about seven percent, not that bad. So if you compare to the past previous pullback, the last one so far between September to October, nine percent, okay, slightly lower. So what we could see this pullback over here is that it actually stopped. Okay, where is it? Uh? Okay, let me copy this. Okay. It actually stopped the previous swing minor swing low of 10th of November. This is where the bullish divergence, the bearish divergence started on the RSI. And it shaped a bullish dragonfly doji, similar to the hammer. And after thereafter, on the 7th of December, it gap up. Okay, so this is what I call what we see over here is that the consolidation or the pullback of the 7%, it seems to be taking on the shape of a bullish flag formation and price action break out above it. And the last three days is trying to actually consolidate at this pullback support line over here. And what's interesting over here is that the RSI, oops, the RSI starts to bounce up from a support level close to the neutrality level, which is the 50%. Now it's at 54%. Okay, it's trying to shape a, a turning up, a turning point up uh, over here. So uh, it seems to me that um, upside momentum in terms of medium term upside momentum may be coming back into the socks, which i.e. What we could see over here is we could start to see further upside to actually test the next resistance at 55670. A breakout above should take us higher towards 58240 uh, slash 596.50 as long as 50.5, 505.60 support level holds for this week. So with a bullish configuration or potential bullish configuration that being seen on the SOX uh, technical chart from a medium term perspective, that means, i.e., uh, in terms of probability, the odds are still skewed towards the current bullish bias that we see or the continuation of the bullish bias from last week on the SPX and the NASDAQ 100. So now let's go down to the SPX 500. Okay, so you could see the SPX 500 over here is that, uh, yeah, it's now attempting to test 47.45 based on our platform, the chart, the all time high, but stage a closing high above it. 
RSI also pretty positive, bounced off from a key corresponding support at the 41% level and start to shape a series of higher high and higher low. So indicate to us that upside momentum uh, from a medium term perspective is coming back into the SPX as well. So price has here so very clearly, uh, it actually closed very strongly above the 50-day moving average again. So the 50-day moving average now is coming to add as a support around 45.90, 45.80 level. So what we have for this week over here is uh, we could we could actually tighten the key medium-term pivotal support. Why? Because it broke above the upside trigger level that we mentioned last week at 47.50. So we will tighten the key medium-term pivotal support to 45.80. So what's 45.80? It's the 50-day moving average that I highlighted on the on, earlier on the daily chart. And this 45.80 over here, if I draw a FIBO uh, project, uh, a retracement taking from the last swing low of 4th of December to last Friday high, that means this is the current rally, is 61.8%. Okay. So, so all in all, what it means that as long as 45.80 holds for this week, we could expect to see the SPX 500 to actually shape uh, further potential upside towards 47.80 slash 48 figure and uh, to uh, extended limit or maximum level potentially at 48.30 slash 48.60. So this is also a, a confluence of FIBO uh, target. So uh, based on Elliott Wave, this is why I call the start of an impulsive up move medium term where we are in the midst to complete the uh the the, the impulsive waste structure of one slash right one slash okay so this this is a, a impulsive wave structure that means we are talking about a potential further potential upside in the weeks ahead all right at least from a from a multi-week perspective okay so now uh potentially as long as 4580 holds okay so if 4580 doesn't hold what we could see is that this whole move here is a messy corrective uh, flat, you know, of a potential uh, sideway uh, corrective flat formation or a sideway, uh, uh, sideway configuration where you could take it down to the bottom of this uh, 4th December low area at 4490 slash 40, uh, 4465. Okay. Now, moving on next will be the uh, NASDAQ 100. Okay. So for the NASDAQ 100, what you could see over here is uh, price actually, actually didn't go back down to the 50-day moving average. It actually tested right exactly at it and stayed a strong rebound last week. Uh, this support level is at 15,700 slash uh, 15,570, which taking into account of the last, uh, the previous medium-term swing high area of 2nd of September. All right. So what we could see is the RSI is also pretty positive. Uh, bounced off slightly from a key corresponding resistance at around the 35% and 34% mark and start to shape a series of higher low as well, okay? So all in all, what it means that uh, the previous bullish bearish divergence has more or less been uh, uh, negated already. That means it has really fulfilled its obligation by shaping, by leading the price action to shape that pullback. And thereafter, right now, a potential bullish impulsive up move is potentially in progress. Okay, so now where do we have the levels for this week in terms of the pivotal support? Okay, so pivotal support will be uh, tightened as well. Why? Because of the last week it break above the uh, bullish upside trigger level at 16.145. And very interestingly, after the breakout, it managed to retest it again on Thursday. Okay, on Thursday before bouncing out on Friday. So the pivotal support, I will actually tighten it to uh, 15,800. So what's 15,800 uh, is in fact this level over here, if I were to draw the FIBO, it's also 61.8%. Okay, slightly below 61.8%. Huh? Okay, so just take into, into question out of this graphical congestion zone. Okay, slightly below it. Okay, 15,800 holes, as well as 15,800 holes, uh, we may see further potential up move towards to retest the current all time high at 16,770. Then thereafter, followed by the next resistance level, which is a, a, a confluence of FIBO expansion level at 17,020, 70,030 level. Okay, but definitely if we start to see a four hour close below 15,800, then all bets are off. We will start to see a kind of a messy consolidation, a pullback to actually retest a 4th December low at 15,540. Then definitely uh, with an extension to actually exp uh, see a down move further towards 15,290, which is uh, the 61.8% FIBO of this entire move from 4th of October all the way to 5th the all-time high, okay, the current all-time high at this uh, 22nd of November, okay, 61.8% over here, okay, so now, right, 
what's next over here for the Hong Kong? Okay, so for Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong 50, the Hansing over here is that uh, last week we have a first uh, resistance to play to look for a bounce off from the 23,000 uh, key support level. Uh, almost hit this this morning at 24,500. So what we could see over here is uh, it printed a high of 24,390, uh, about to test then after it did another minor pullback so far. Okay, so what we could see, why this 23,000 million pivotal support is important. I don't want to tighten it so much. Why? Because it's exactly at this uh, long-term key, you know, this green line here, this uh, turquoise line. So this turquoise line over here is uh, 23,000, okay, 24,000 slash 23,000. Uh, what we could see, this turquoise line is actually the long-term key ascending trend line support level, circular long-term ascending trend line support level in place since the great financial crisis low, which is October 2008 low, that managed to cap previous steep decline, uh, the one that happened for April 20, 2015 to uh, January 2016, then from uh, Jan 2018, all the way to March 2020. Okay, then definitely this was, was the last steep decline so far that we see on 14 Sep, all the way down to 28th of November. And what's interesting over here is that uh, we start to see a bullish divergence today. So this bullish divergence is more or less intact because of last week price action. Okay, last week price action actually shaped this bullish divergence. So uh, it means that i.e. this long-term downtrend, the momentum is actually losing uh, steam. That means what we could see is that potentially advocating for a potential uh, significant recovery, at least from a multi-month perspective, to retest this, the range top at 26,770. So that's for a one to three months perspective, yeah? So what we could see is that this bullish divergence also took shape previously when the, the price action this April 2015 to February 2016 uh, bear market actually tested the long-term circular trendline support. The RSI also shaped a very similar bullish divergence. Then thereafter, price action start to shape a circular, let's say, start to shape a uh, bullish impulsive multi-month up move sequence, okay, thereafter. So yeah, we could actually see a potential one as well happening, but definitely it got to break above 26,770 first. Okay. So now from a multi-week perspective, that means talking about one to three weeks perspective, we will still keep the same levels. Okay, except that uh, in another intermediate support at 23,800, which was the minor range uh, range top resistance that was formed on 1st December to 3rd of December before uh, breaking out last week on the later part of last week. So this will be my intermediate support. So 23,000 level will be still my key support for this week to watch. So what we could see over here is uh, we are still expecting a kind of push up as long as this 23,000 holds to slowly go up towards the top of this range here uh, with a break of 24,500 definitely then to test 25,800. So what's 25,800 is actually this uh, descending trend line uh, resistance from the high of 11 August that prevent further upside from breaking up on the uh, 8th of August, didn't break. Again, on the 21st of October to 26th of October, didn't break and uh, most recently on the 16th of November. Okay, so uh, if you start to see uh, a kind of a, 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 a daily close below 23,000, we may start to see an intraday drop to actually test the next support level at 22,100. So what's 22,100? is uh, very close. It's, it's, a, it's a cluster of people expansion level as well, taken drawing from this uh, ongoing downtrend. And also this uh, lower boundary of this uh, very uh, complex expanding wage range configuration that is in place since its 52 week high of uh, 52 week high that was printed on 18 of Feb 2021, which is at 31,114 level. So it's been kind of a trading inside this expanding wage kind of uh, range configuration. Okay. Uh, it's a multi-month kind of uh, a downtrend. Uh. So uh, until it's able to break out of this downtrend, uh, we're still we kind of uh, seeing kind of a con congestion. So it's more of a congestion play within this uh, expanding wage configuration. All right. So now uh, moving to the next Asia index would be the Nikkei 225. So uh, on the Nikkei 225, right, also very similar to the uh, Hong Kong 50, but there are showing what I call a sideway within a major uptrend, a more clear sideway. Yeah? So what we could see this uh, Nikkei 225 over here is that very clearly it's the March 2020 low, the uptrend is still intact, except that it's after hitting the 30 year plus high at 16, uh, 30,716 uh, or 16 of Feb, then 14 of September attempt to break out above it again. 
but then thereafter it just to do a consolidation. So what you could see is that it could be a rectangular range of consolidation that is uh, taking place since 16 of Feb, rather than an expanding wage configuration that is you no know, trading on the downside. Okay, that means what we see over here is that this is more sideways, while Hansen is more of an expanding wage uh, downside range configuration. So in terms of strength wise, this seems to be much uh, better compared to the Hong Kong 50 index. So what you could see is that last week we have a bullish bias. Why? Because the price action from 22nd of November all the way down to 1st of December, it retested the lower boundary of this uh, multi-month sideways range, which is about close to about nine months already since the 16th Feb uh, 30 year plus high. And also the RSI managed to bounce off from its oversold region. Okay, so right now it's uh, still healthy, attempting to actually shape another uh, push up again. All right, so before hitting the overbought zone over here. So what we could see over here is uh, last week we have the first resistance level, which is at uh, 28,700 28, level, which has really been met over here. And price did a pullback towards on Friday before right now attempting to actually ship another turn again. So what we could see over here is that potentially right within this longer term uh, sideways range, that means starting from 15, 14, uh, 16 of Feb, there is a potential medium term symmetrical triangle within this major sideways range. That means we start to see what I call a subset. Lah. A medium term symmetrical triangle within a major sideways range. Okay, that means a subset. Lah. So what we could see is that within this symmetrical triangle actually took shape from uh, 14 of September. Okay, 14 of September. So it's about uh, September, October is about three months plus, which is uh, typically the uh, traditional, uh, we call it, uh, uh, we call it uh, time horizon for, for a, a triangle formation. So what we could see over here is that this triangle formation uh, in terms of, uh, in, in terms of, 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 of its wave count, it could be, this could be the, uh, let's say this A, B, C, D, uh, sorry, A, B, C, D, E. If that, that, that could be another push down after hitting the top of this range. So uh, what we could do over here is uh, we don't want to tighten the key middle term pivotal support, the pivotal support that we have last week. So we maintain it because it's still within this triangle range. Because if we tie it too tight, right, it's actually uh, not prudent. Uh, why? Because uh, what if there's whipsaw within this triangle range? So we keep it at the bottom of the triangle range, which is at 27,500. So as well as 27,500 holes, we're still expecting it to see a further push up towards 29,500, which is the top part of this range. So definitely, very clearly, if we see a daily close above 29,500, then we could say that there will be a bullish breakout on this triangle to retest the major range resistance of 30,716, 30,870, which is the 807, which is the 4th September 2021 high. Okay, so uh, definitely if a four hour close below 27,500, then we could see a drop down to test the lower boundary of this uh, major range uh, configuration, which is at 27,000 figure, 26,880. And what's so interesting over here is that the four hour RSI starts to inch upwards as well after a retest from a former descending resistance turns into a pullback support at the 40% level. And also prior to that, it start to shape a bullish divergence as well at the oversold region. Okay, so all in all, momentum is still, shorter momentum is still positive, which could advocate a further potential up move towards the top of the symmetrical triangle range resistance at 29,500, as long as 27,500 key medium term pivotal support holds. Okay, so now uh, going towards the last index will be the European index, uh, which I tend to have uh, to use the German 40 as the gauge. Why? Because the German economy is the biggest economy in the Eurozone. All right. So what we could see over here is uh, now there's some signs of a positive because last week we actually kind of turned neutral because of mixed signal. Uh, the RSI very clearly starts to inch up higher after hitting a key support level very closely at the 20% mark over here. That is in place since the 19 March 2020 low, which also corresponds to the low of this ongoing major uptrend for the German 40 index. So right now it's actually attending to actually inch much higher above the 50% level. So indicating to us that the medium term outside momentum seems to be reviving as well. And if you look at last Friday price action, it's actually attempted to shape a kind of a, 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 a bullish a harami a formation right at the above the 200 day moving average. Okay, so slightly below it, uh, this previous swing high here is at 15,420. And the bottom of the range over here is 14,800, okay, which uh, this slight 
that we see that is being correspond to the decline as well in the global uh, stock market, okay, driven by the Amazon variant, managed to store at uh, right above the 14,800 mark, which has managed to keep uh, previous uh, dips or previous slide in the price action since 13 May 2021 low. So this level here is a pretty significant level, yeah, because of uh, the, how the price action managed to defend it in the past three or four, in the past uh, three to six months, okay. So 14,800, definitely a key support level. So definitely with that in mind, uh, so what we could do over here is uh, we don't want to tighten it so tightly to the 15,420 level in terms of a uh, medium term uh, strategy, we talk about multi week strategy. So what we have is uh, we still keep 14,800 as a key medium term pivotal support, except that we now have uh, more bullish buyers uh, to see further potential up move. That means uh, as long as 14,800 holds, we could start to see a push up uh, for a retest towards the current all-time high at 16,300, then definitely followed by the top of the channel, the short-term ascending channel that is in place since 30th of November low, which is at 16,470, and as well as the, it's also the one-time uh, FIBO projection as well. Okay, that drawn from the low of 30th of November uh, to the high of 8th of December, projected from the low of 10th of December. All right, so, but if we start to see a daily close, oh, sorry, a four hour close below 14,800, then we will start to see another round of messy uh, correction to actually test the next support level at 14,330 for the German 30 index. All right, so all in all, what we could see is that, yes, uh, this is a pivotal week in terms of a central bank's meeting uh, where the Fed could actually offer a hawkish guidance, which I more or less believe has been really priced into the market. Uh, and if there's no surprise from the Fed over here is that the momentum that we see last week on the major stock indices where the US is leading could actually continue this week as long as the those uh, aforementioned key medium-term pivotal support holds. Okay, so with that, have a great uh, trading week ahead and i see you all next in my next video.